So um, the, the, the timing is purely coincidental in terms of how this happened, but I'm, I'm launching a new company called Losteen Cattle Company. And um, raising beef cattle has been a lifelong uh, a, a dream of mine. And uh, it, it, it just so happened uh, about 40 years ago now, um, my dad and I purchased a, a, a ranch in the Willow Valley for recreation. Um, then I met uh, a, a gentleman who's a, a master falconer actually in the Willow Valley right next to our ranch that was getting into, into Buffalo and we ended up talking realized we were a perfect fit. He for on-site management, me for uh, the marketing side and philosophy on, on, on farming and husbandry and, and soil biology and um, the idea for Losting Cattle Company was born. Um, the whole idea is contrary to modern beef production which is feedlot, uh, corn fed, antibiotics and hormones. So it's 180 of that. It's all Scottish Highland cattle. It's uh, completely grass fed and uh, no no grain finishing and then um, it's uh, you know no hormones no antibiotics uh, certified organic pastures um, and uh, you know humane harvest and all those things so it's, it's, it's taking that state winery model and everything we've learned about um, growing healthy uh, healthy soils and uh, applying it to to beef so we're really excited about that that's that's also going to be a um, you know, direct to consumer model. It, it's basically taking, um, you know, the beautiful thing about the wine industry is it's always been sort of the, you know, the, the, the summit of, you know, farm to table. It's like, you know, in many cases, exactly what vineyard it came from, what, you know, the, the consumer knows where their product came from and who raised it. We're trying to take that exact same philosophy and uh, apply it to beef, something that obviously complements the red wines from Walla Walla extraordinarily well. So, um, that um, um, that will be available in in fall of this year in, in 2010. So uh, something I'm I'm really excited about, and so that'll all, also be managed under the umbrella company, uh, Figgins Family Wine Estates. And so uh, just so there's um, you know crossover between brands, and and people understand that um, you know can use us as a filter for sustainability and quality, whether it's it's wine or in this case food. And so um, that's something I'm, uh, I'm tremendously excited about. So Andy, these are our Scottish Highland cows. These are eight of them uh, that I have here at Figgins Vineyard. Uh, the majority of them, about 250 year old, are our ranch in Wallow Valley. And um, chose Scottish Highland for, for several reasons. They're, uh, they're an incredibly docile animal. They, they like humans. You don't, you know, there's no, um, uh, you don't have to treat them harshly. They just, uh, they're a very smart animal. They also are known because of their their long hair. Almost on cue, he comes up to us <laughs> like that. Um, because of their long hair, they um, on grass you can still have a tender cut of meat. They form their fat intracellular instead of extracellular because they don't need that fat on the outside of their body to stay warm through the winters. Um, also in in Willow Valley, they uh, you know the winters are, are harsher, and so they're just it's. You know, they, they get hot over about 60 degrees, so we have to have shade for them. But um, they love it when it's um, when it's cooler. Um, they're also an amazing. They're not a selective feeder. They'll they'll eat browse. So um, you know, they love shrubs and things like that. Um, and and uh, there's a um, a lot of science behind eating condensed tannins in uh, in their browse. Uh, helps them from having uh, that gamey flavor that that grass-fed beef can have. So it's a much milder. Um, it's still a, a rich, robust flavor, but it's not that gamey flavor. We've done a bunch of taste trials, and and we really uh, really like it. Um, the other thing we're experimenting with is finishing them on some palmas. So our harvest time is um, uh, is in the fall, and so it works out perfect with palmas uh, at, at harvest at crush time. So we're uh, feeding them the palmas, which they absolutely love. My dad started, uh, when I was a kid, he'd put some at Lee Nettie, put some over the fence, and they'd come running for it. Um, not Scottish Highland, of course, but the neighbor's cows. And so I've, I've always known they've loved it. And so now we're experimenting with finishing on, them on that, tasting, you know, palmas finished versus non-finished. And, and uh, they really like it. So I presume uh, because of the way that they're raised that they're going to be uh, more balanced and things like omega threes and be healthier. For exactly, people. the omega uh, corn uh, ent entirely messes up the, the health aspects to eating beef. Eating grass fed beef 
uh, is it's very lean. And it, it also, the as you mentioned, the omega-3 fatty acids are higher and um, the omega-6s are lower. That's, that's the bad fatty acids. And the uh, uh, CLAs, conjugated linoleic acids, are, are higher as well, which is a bit beneficial, heart healthy. So it uh, goes right along with, with red wine, and, and we love that. Hmm. And um, the cool thing about Scottish Highland is they're, um, it's some of the oldest untampered with genetics. Uh, they're, it's old genes. They're very pure. They're, they're not, um, they haven't been bred to get fat in feedlots. And so um, that's, because uh, that's not our goal, of course. Um, our goal is, is, just like with wine, it's, it's quality um, and, and not necessarily just, you know, putting on, putting on pounds. You know, what that means is, um, you know, also because they're slower to mature, you know, the price is higher. There, there is, there is efficiency in feedlots. That's why it's, why it's done, but it's not sustainable. So what we're trying to do is sustainable and quality at the same point. And that means, uh, at least twice as long to harvest as your typical, uh, um, beef finished in a feedlot. So we're pretty, pretty excited about that. How you doing boys? How you doing? Yeah, well, he says good. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like you're really putting your WSU degree to work here. Yeah, right? absolutely. So. <laughs> you know, and that's what I love. I, I love farming. I've done it since I was a kid, whether it's in, you know, vineyards as a kid. It was, you know, picking strawberries down the road for clickers or, uh, you know, driving wheat truck uh, uh, for the Ely's or, you know, picking grapes or apples or cherries and all, just all the things you do as a kid here. And so agriculture is in my blood. Wine, of course, is is what you know really uh drives the whole thing but uh to do livestock is a whole nother thing uh grapevines never get out of a fence and run down the road these guys will <laughs> if you're not careful <laughs> what'd you what'd your dad think when you uh when you guys started working on this project he was skeptical until he sat down with a bottle of wine and did taste tests and now he's he thinks it's the best thing <laughs> yeah the best thing ever so it's uh he's really excited about it yeah, yeah. fantastic